Okay, the bio reporting. Yes, it's barren enough. It could be the moon. Actually, it's an abandoned slate quarry near Mahinsley in Wales. They're learning here how to use the unusable, how to make a world again out of a moon. This is the Centre for Alternative Technology. It's where Roderick James is putting the whole idea on test, on test and on show. Roderick, why is there a need for a centre like this in a Western world like Britain? Well, we believe there are three main areas which need attention. There's energy, um, energy supply, food supply, and provision of shelter for people. And in energy, we believe that we've got to move into balance with the finite resources on the Earth. We've got to make maximum use of the renewable resources that are available the whole time. And that we've got to use far more wisely the reserves of coal, oil, and gas, which are our capital. But, in a sense, the, the windmills and things we have here are symbols. They're trying to encourage people to the possibilities, and they're partly educational. We've only to look around us for alternative energy sources, with every incentive too, because each one of them is free for us to tap. For instance, in Wales, much of the energy all might provide is here, in the power of water. Again and again, this little stream will give it from its mountain source right on down to the sea. It even powers itself uphill to water the once infertile slate. It's what alternative technology really means, making something out of nothing, finding out what we can borrow rather than take from our environment. Everywhere I look, I see things we can all learn from. They really are making this place work, and they're beginning to prove with their ingenuity here that you don't have to bankrupt this planet to live a full and healthy life on it. Even with little or no space, we can all grow some of the food we eat. It's healthier too. Even with little or no climate, we can catch from wind, from sun, some of the energy we use. This laundry line of solar panels is on test here, so I asked one of the researchers to tell me more. Alan, what exactly are you doing here? Well, I'm trying to prepare the efficiencies of as many panels as possible um, to do this on circulating water through panels four at a time. Um, by measuring the incoming solar radiation on each panel and things like the flow rate through each panel and the temperature rise across each panel, I can uh, then calculate the heat output from the panels and, and their efficiencies from that information. Oh yes, I checked. Is certainly right. They've also discovered that the fresh water carp, one of the richest protein sources we know of, is also one of the easiest to care for. These fish need no more food than you can grow in your garden, and no more warmth than you can take from the sun. But it's no use making something out of nothing if you fail to put it to its best use. Alternative technology teaches us that too. Take this house. It actually works on one-fifth of the energy most other houses of its size devour. The energy needed to heat and air condition it, even to cook in it, is made to work with the utmost efficiency. They've even learned now to recycle most of the energy it uses. But as Roderick says... None of the things we've got here are answers to the problem, but we believe they're the beginning of answers to the problem, and the fact is that the whole centre is independent of mains, and we're all living here and we're growing food and we're gradually putting up more of our own buildings. So we're beginning to show that we can be a lot more self-reliant. Oh, thank you, Ed. Oh, it looks delicious to me. Mm. It tastes delicious too. Come to fresh. And what does it cost? A little thought. And for all of us who share this planet, a little thoughtfulness.
this is the most edible thing. Goodbye from Arkansas in Wales. Yes, how long does it take you to cook? 